This isn't even, it's not even on the plan, not even on the list. <laughs> it changes everything. Changes the last one is, is really our last one. Right, I think, right? Well, did we talk about Oh, that? no, we didn't. No, no, we we play board games? <laughs> they don't understand. Nerds, truly yes. nerds. <laughs> through and through. <laughs> Just start with a bit holder uh, conversation here. Now I know there's plenty of bit holders that you can buy and they can be color coded and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but over the years I've tried several different things and I've kind of settled on one that has a, a good look to it, you know, kind of but a heavy duty thing. So it's all these dishes made by Bon Chef. I have no idea if you'll be able to see that. Uh, maybe we'll get a close up somewhere. Uh, but Bon Chef, uh, they make high end uh, kind of kitchen supplies. And uh, this right here is uh, is a little appetizer sauce uh, holder that's there. And I find these every now and then on eBay for crazy outrageous prices. And then every now and then really cheap. And so this one right here is kind of fun because we have the white ceramic ceramic one if you'd rather play with that and we have these but what I like about these is I can go with a six I can have six of them uh, right here if I want a couple of them that are holding pieces that people are sharing out and I like six or seven of them I like a whole bunch put one usually they're sitting at the corner of the table so that when we get ready to play a person can just use it if they want it's yeah to go. and I'm amazed at the amount of times I want three so we've got this which is a single yeah we've got also smaller ones we've got like smaller that. ones like this but I end up almost always using the three, even if I don't use all the slots. This almost, most games are gonna benefit from maybe a one, five, 10 coin or something like that. These have become one of my favorite things ever. I'm never just losing pieces. <laughs> they're all contained. And they're really heavy duty and that sort of thing. And, and, and they it, usually look like they fit whatever <laughs> right, game you're playing. Right, it whatever. doesn't matter. They just kind of have an aesthetic that's like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense for that game. The other one that we probably use uh, quite a bit, we do a game camp uh, here at camp called Tabletopia. And this right here becomes the bank. And I'm surprised how much it gets uh, used and put in the corner of the table. Usually only one per game. You know, and it's not like every player has one of these. Uh, but again, these are pretty much uh, eBay. Uh, they look better used and yeah. you know, beat up. You want and... the patina. That's, right. That's important. I think <laughs> I'm using that word, word right. That's I a good word. <laughs> I like that word. Now this one, I wish I played with more. I like the idea and the concept and all that. Um, I haven't played with it as much as I'd like. But every time I'm like, oh, we should use uh, this. This is basically got an old coin box i uh, picked this up off of, again i think off of ebay maybe a thrift store or something like that it's the regular like metal uh pieces uh kind of coin box what i like about this is i used a scythe set um mm -hmm. and then all of the expansions that they have for scythe so a one piece two piece three piece five ten twenty and 50 they had a special on 50s now the problem with this is that size doesn't have a hundred piece and i'm like oh no i'm in trouble i need something different than all of these coins so this right here um is a hundred peso um so it's a little it's a gold color it has a different color than all the other ones it's a thicker it still uh, kind of coin. fits the theme yeah so still fits still, uh, it looks like fits it's part the of the set. and you can get it cheap enough uh mm -hmm. that is uh that is okay you don't need many of them because it's a hundred uh hundred piece but man, the one, twos, threes, and fives are using those uh, all the time. And that's really a fun set to, even if they just have cardboard bits, you're over here using metal and uh, and you're set to go. I yeah, like I, and I'm sure a hundred different people have probably told you this already. If you're looking at a video like this, everyone has their metal coins. A lot of people do. There's a reason. There's a reason <laughs> everyone does. They. It's just there's something satisfying about that, that noise. Like yeah. that just feels right. Yeah. And it, it means that you don't have to pull those things out, that this is the automatic bank. Uh, the moment you pull it out, uh, you're set to go. Uh, so that's another gadget uh, that I don't know. I don't know what the size coins are. That's two sets of coins plus the, all the addition pieces. I can pick this up for like 12 bucks, uh, something like that. Another in the vein of bit holder, and I'm really, this is one of my favorite probably one of my favorite gadgets that we use and maybe the hardest one for you to <laughs> get a hold of this right here is the um lazy susan bit holder thing basically yeah you gotta put that over yeah got a lazy susan right here which that's uh 12 12 bucks or uh, so and a couple of uh, pads that you just kind of um uh, stick on there and then on this side we've used our um, here at camp we use a cnc router so he just uh, he put this on the publisher and then yeah yeah just put it in the software to to cut all the cut all the pieces 
We, I'm telling you, this thing. This is a Robinson Crusoe. Yeah, uh, saves you. Uh, yeah, right you there. need this if you're playing Robinson Crusoe. And still, when I play Robinson Crusoe, I don't have enough space for the amount of bits. Yeah, you use and, all the even yeah, the diamonds. everything. You play uh, the little things, the little. I mean, you're using everything. But it's fantastic. You just set this right in the middle of the table. It spins just fast enough, not so yeah, not, fast not that you're fast. losing pieces. Um, this thing is phenomenal for the right game. Now, if you don't play games that use this many pieces, this is a little overkill. But Yeah, and I think something like this, that even if you just have it in your mind, oh, can I add a uh, Lazy Susan to it? Can so let's I show you an alternative pop? that, that yeah. might be easier for you to do. That's this. This is this is one of our your first gadgets. Yeah, builds. this is our first gadget. This is early on uh, gadget. This was our Dominion improvement. So back in the day, <laughs> when we first started playing board games, Five or six years ago, Dominion obviously is the game to go to, the one you learn a yeah, lot of Yeah, a gateway on. for a lot of people, right. too. This was the improvement, and man, is it an improvement. This is your store. Each of these slots is where you put cards, and when you're shopping, you don't have to... If we got that pesky glare over on that side, who cares? You don't look on that side of the table. You're just spinning this around, and right in front of you, you can do some window shopping for whatever thing you want to buy. Yeah, you as know well what? as a center spot. For we it. just played here to slay, and I could see it wouldn't have to be this big. This is set up with the ten slots and uh, ten slots around the side. All of your uh, your victory, victory points, points and your gold and discard pile. Yep. Yeah, mm, so that's all. It's all kind of set up for uh, Dominion. But again, that lazy Susan. Anytime you find yourself leaning over the table, what does that yeah, card I, say? You got that horrible glare. <laughs> right. You're like, oh, we need to put a lazy Susan under that. And we need to put a lazy Susan under the store. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we can see because it just moves it right up to you and you're able to read it and it's like it's right in front of your spot and you're set to go and then i mean you can make these in any configuration you want mm -hmm. depending on the game you can make a really generic one you can just put a bunch of cross sections and then and have little segments you can turn this into your bit holder if you you know yeah close off the ends you can attach these i mean there's i would even be interested in saying let's if i want a big one but i want to mm -hmm. do cnc i can glue a bunch of these on there yep just a ton of application. The Lazy Susan. The Lazy Susan can revolutionize really, your, right. the be over dramatic. I think yeah. it can revolutionize your game playing. <laughs> it changes everything. It changes the world. <laughs> okay. Oh, almost hit the mic. Uh, and our last one, five gadgets uh, that are here. Our last one That's is. really our last one? Right. I think, right? What did we talk about? Oh, that? no, we didn't. No, no, before we, we do the last one. Okay. Number four. Uh, number four on the list. This is also kind of an advertisement for a video that we haven't done yet. <laughs> yeah. That we're in the process of making. It. We're making a video about our game table that he built. Um, this is a $250 game table. There's there's more parts to it that'll make it a little more expensive, but you can get in on the bare bones at about $250. Look for that video. I think yeah. it'll be a big help to you. This is the indispensable <laughs> gadget, gadget for the game table. Explain for me what this is. Well, uh, so right now there's it just it's made up of three parts here. One is just your basic mouse pad, um, and then it's got a little tray uh, that has a frame on it uh, that uh, holds that mouse pad in, you know, nice and solid, so it doesn't move anywhere. And then it's got the roll in. It's got this little bracket uh, right here. What makes the game table uh, so nice? This game table is so nice. Is that this is a roll in. Uh, now you can even be on there. This is a roll-in right spot right here. So it just rolls in, and now you're you're strong. You're, you're set to go. So anything that you're setting off here on the side, uh, you're set to go. And you can put your mouse pad uh, right there, and that's your snack table or or your uh, or your your rule book. If you spend any amount of time watching our channel, you'll notice this being used in random places, whether you realize it or not. A lot of times, it holds our box as part of our display. It'll hold a rule book off to the left or right. I'm I'm usually the rule guy, so I, I like having my rules easy yep. to access without cluttering the table. Holds the bank off I to the side. I think of all the gadgets we've just talked about, we've probably used this one yeah. the most. Well, the I, cup holder. That's true. We, this isn't even, not even on the plan, not even on the list. <laughs> this is part of the standard, yeah. uh, standard we part just, of the game table. you got to have a cup holder. <laughs> These ones are pretty unique. We talk about them a little more depth yeah. in our um, table video whenever that comes out, whenever we finish right. it. But yeah, those are indispensable. But really, I, uh, you know, you know, whether you not you put the whole tray here, I actually think that right there is a pretty decent gadget. Right. So if you don't have a game table, you don't want to buy that. Just go pick up some basic um, mouse, mouse pads, pads mm -hmm. and put them down on your table. You can, I can get a bunch of these if you don't want to invest in it. So this has got a neoprene mat on it. If you don't want to invest a lot of money in that. You can just buy a couple of these. This becomes my player, and you can make everyone's mm -hmm. player uh, mat just look nicer. Get them in different colors. These 
surprisingly really like them. And and if you you've never used neoprene while playing a game, go do oh, it. Oh man, it, yeah. Change. We haven't even Oof. talked about um, you know tops or mats, but uh, at another time. But they really make it so uh, nice. Card pickup, all that sort of thing, where you're yeah. uh, picking up, working from your cards right there. Uh, that little bit of give. You you find yourself. You don't even think about it. You find yourself pushing right underneath there to lift everything up. Now these are the things that when we talk about it with people that don't play board games, <laughs> they don't understand. Nerds, truly yes. nerds, <laughs> through and through. This is as geeky as it gets. Okay, now number last five. one, yeah, final no. one. You you want to record it the gadget is just whatever it takes to record it so it's as simple as getting a sharpie and leaving it in your game area and and the way we use a sharpie so in this box right here is the game lifeboat now i know if you're going to go to board game geek and look up uh, lifeboat it comes in a little dinky box we <laughs> We've probably played this game as much as any game uh, that we've got. We will talk about this game at another time. But what we've done here on this game, I don't know if we'll be able to see it. It's a beast. Uh, but we've recorded it. And uh, are we in? Yeah, yeah, we got okay. it. So we've recorded it. And so there's a Sharpie inside this box uh, that's ready to go. Back in 2015, there's Joseph uh, that won. It was called So Close and uh, 22, 21 to 20. Uh, and then as we got going, we were like, no, no, no. Uh, here's, uh, here's on New Year's Eve in uh, 2018, Elijah won. And he won with Sir Stephen uh, with 20 points. So we always record the date. And then we give the person that won and then the um, points they won with, and then they get to name it. And I'm amazed that the amount of, to commemorate <laughs> what you've done, how you've played, your successes and failures, so much fun. Yeah, this becomes so, a little history book of this game. So I played this game, what, uh, four or five days ago? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Sandy, who had never played before, uh, beat us with Madam Wong with 20 points. I got 19 on this. And before we started playing, this became a history of the last five years of playing this game. Like, remember that game? And my name's on there, like, I tied once, and I think I'm on there one or two. I've played most of these. <laughs> and I've lost most of them. Uh, but it, it's a fun just just kind of remembering and, it, and it's a way to increase the stakes of a game without making it serious yeah. and it's, it's like because then you when we sit down with new people so oh, yeah you're gonna get one you want your name on the board and they're like what do you mean we'll show them they're like oh i, Ooh, need now that. I wanna yeah. play. so no. then the whole game it's the big trash talk about who's gonna be on the board and it's a silly thing, but it, it really does and, elevate and the every moment, game. The moment the game's over, where's that Sharpie? Yeah, I need to sign <laughs> it Whoever now. one is doing it. Now, this is naming winners. And I'm, I'll bet some of you write on the inside of a game or you play, you play. So some of you have an app uh, for that. But we have another recording. There's, a un, there's, a, there's <laughs> another thing that we like to do that I really haven't seen my, very many other places. And that's these. These are, these are called the, um, what are they called? Uh, it's the Lost Chair. The meaner way to say it is loser chair. <laughs> in our game that we designed Crossroads, if you win, you sign the outside of the board. And that's, it's like an eight by eight. Yeah, it's board. a huge. So it's like 16 feet of names. <laughs> but if you lose, you sign your own chair that you're sitting in. And so it's really a chance to commemorate. Right, right up there in front, there's Bodhi, Bodhi oh on, the lo on the loser chair. That's really sad. Okay. So it's really a chance. <laughs> okay. to... There's my name yeah, on the loser chair. Uh... There's a lot of bitterness behind <laughs> these chairs. Yeah, you can feel the pain because you not only have to record like what Something happened. Fell. What's it? Something fell. You're fine. Just keep going. <laughs> you not only have to record what, what happened, you've got to name the game. So it's when we played and maybe what the score was uh, or the date, but, but actually naming the game is it's kind of that debrief of the whole game it's kind of like wow that was quite a game i wonder what i'm gonna name uh mine so this one's named what happened uh and we lost again and uh i can't read i lost again but i was kind of close uh so it's just got some fun and, and you can remember all those stories so there are a few games i wouldn't do this with every game in your collection uh but if you've got a favorite game yeah or, one or you're three, always coming back to because it, it really works when it's something you can look back through five years of, mm -hmm. of stories and names and point to so yeah. lifeboat we always play consistently and then crossroads we always play so that's one of our favorite gadgets that we like to use so there you go there's five gadgets uh the bond chef uh um bit holders uh the coin box uh with the scythe coins in it lazy susan lazy susan's the mouse pad uh and the little uh thing that would go on a, on a game table and just simply record it so i hope you can take one of these and just make your game night just a little bit more fun all right, well, that worked. I think that was a fun one.